Hi everybody, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video I am talking about hepatic physiology. This is actually my third video on hepatic physiology. In the first video I talked about the three major functions of the liver. In the second video I talked about uh, the physiology of portal blood flow. And these videos are both important introductions to understanding what I'm going to talk about in this video. So if you haven't had a chance I'll put a um, link here to uh, quickly access the video channel on uh, gastrointestinal and physiology and you can view those videos first. Now in this video I'm really going to get down to talking about the uh, function uh, at the cellular tissue and cellular level of the liver. So the liver is broken up into functional units that look like hexagons and it's laid out in a way that looks like a beehive or honeycomb. Now, in these hexagons are made up of a bunch of cells. The cells include what are called the reticuloendothelial cells. And these are sort of the cells that provide the structure for um, the major functional cells of the liver. Um, these cells include the endothelial cells of the sinusoids and they include within the sinusoids we have Kupfer cells and these are the macrophages that line that sort of hang out inside the sinusoids sort of lining the endothelial cells and then um, we have stellate cells and these are cells that are inside the space of dis and I'll talk about what that is in a second um, and then we have cholangiocytes which line the bile ducts the intrahepatic bile ducts. And then the other major class of cells is all of the hepatocytes. Now the hepatocytes are the major functional cells of the liver. So all of these cells um, provide sort of a cellular structure around the hepatocytes so the hepatocytes can do their work. And obviously there is um, there is a collagen-based um, network that sort of holds everything in place. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction to the cells that we're going to be talking about. Now let's talk a little bit about the structure. So we have here this honeycomb structure that's made up of um, liver lobules that are hexagonal sh shaped. And in the middle of each of these hexagonal shaped lobules is a central vein. And it's hard to draw this in three three dimensions, but all these sort of um, come together and um, work their way into the hepatic vein which drains into the inferior vena cava. So this the central vein is the vein that will eventually drain into the systemic circulation. The portal vein, the portal veins sort of run here. Actually, let me draw them in a different color. So the portal veins are here, sort of on the corners of each of these lobules. And then we have sinusoids that join them. Okay. Now also on the corners here we have the hepatic arteries. The hepatic arteries um, add a little bit to the circulation so not all of the blood flow through 
the lobules is coming from the portal vein. Uh, the portal vein supplies about 75% of the circulation. And then the hepatic artery provides the remaining 75%. I mean the remaining 25%. And you know this is important because the portal vein has already gone through a capillary bed so this blood the blood here in the portal vein is pretty well deoxygenated and the liver is doing a lot of things that require oxygen so it needs to get its oxygen supply so this 25 percent that the hepatic artery is providing for the hepatic circulation is primarily to bring oxygenation right the liver is getting plenty of nutrients from the GI tract, but it needs oxygen via the hepatic artery. Okay, so so this group of hexagons is exactly what you'd see if you slice the liver and put it under a light microscope. Now we're going to take one of these hexagons and or one of these lobules and look at it a little closer up. So remember in the center we have the central vein and this is draining to the systemic circulation. Now out here in the corner we have a portal vein and a hepatic artery. Now this is going to provide circulation. These two sort of are going to combine their blood to have sort of partially oxygenated nutrient rich blood in and it's going to spread into this capillary bed. That capillary blood bed is going to drain from the outside of the lobule where the portal vein and hepatic artery arterioles come in in towards the central vein. So the direction of flow is like this, right? Okay, and I've taken a moment to um, to just label a few of the things that we've talked about so far. Now the next thing I'm going to draw in here in gray are lining the sinusoids are endothelial cells and they are similar to endothelial cells um, lining any other capillary or blood vessel in the body but they have some modifications and one of the modifications is their interstices the spaces in between them are a little wider than usual and then the other modification if you look at them under a light microscope you actually see that they have little tiny holes poked in them so if you looked at one underneath a, a light microscope what you would find is you'd see an endothelial cell that looks like this and then when you looked at it closely you would see these little holes poked in it and these holes you know the fancy Latin term for a window is is fenestra so these um, capillary these endothelial cells inside the sinusoids are fenestrated so they actually have holes inside of them and so in addition to um, in addition to the fact that they have loose interstices they also have holes in, in them that make them very permeable to even large molecules now so even fairly good sized proteins with um, you know molecular weights of up to about 250,000 which is a big protein um, can fit through these fenestra and um, widened interstic interstices <clears throat> okay so we have the fenestrated endothelial cells and then outside of those fenestrated endothelial cells there's a little bit of a space and that space is called the space of, of dis and then just outside of that we have 
a row of hepatocytes. And these are the major working cells of the liver. The, these cells are where um, nutrients are metabolized, proteins are synthesized, uh, fats are um, synthesized, and uh, carbohydrates are stored. Most of the functions of the liver occur in these hepatocytes. And they make up very tight fitting rows. And again, there's a little space in between the endothelial cells and the hepatocytes. And this, this space is called the space of disse, or it's called, I, it, you also could call it the perisinusoidal space. But the official name for it is the space of disse. Now, um, and, and this is just a space, in, again, in between the endothelial cells and the hepatocytes. Now just behind the hepatocytes is another small little lumen here. That is the bile canaliculi, or the bile canaliculus. One would be a canaliculus, the two would be, a can would be two canaliculi. So anyways, they drain. Um, these sort of move in the opposite direction of the blood flow, and they drain back towards the outside of the liver lobule into small bile ducts that are parallel to the portal vein and the hepatic vein. And these sort of gather together into the in intrahepatic bile ducts that eventually work their way to the gallbladder. Canaliculus. Now, this is <clears throat> this is where the hepatocytes um, will secrete the bile salts that they are synthesizing and the conjugated um, bilirubin, the, bil the bilirubin that they have conjugated. They secrete this um, through their um, this surface into the bile canaliculi which drain into the bile ducts. Okay, so one of the cells that I haven't talked about yet are the Kupfer cells. And these cells are macrophages that line the sinusoids. So, and there's a fair number of them. So these kind of lay attached to the endothelial cells on the inside of the sinusoidal lumen. And these are macrophages that have a significant role in engulfing enteric bacteria. Now, another cell that we've sort of been discovering the importance of over the past few years is called the uh, stellate cells, and another name for them is Eto cells. And they're sort of these starlight shell star shaped cells that are in the space of Disse. So in between the sinusoids and the hepatic cells. Hepatocytes. So stellate cells and one of the major functions of these cells is, is storage of vitamin A. Um, however, we've also discovered that they have a very significant role in the pathogenesis of cirrhosis um, because they seem to have um, a significant role in the inflammation of the sinusoids and the parasinusoidal space. So they're important cells to recognize and kind of know where they are. Now one thing that you may see discussed in um, textbooks is there's sort of three different zones within the sinusoids and it really has to do with the amount of oxygen that they have um, access to. So the zone of the sinusoids closest to the where the hepatic artery and portal vein come in is called zone one. 
And in zone one, um, because it has access to um, a lot of oxygen, it is sort of responsible for high uh, metabolic functions. So things that take a lot of oxygen, uh, like glycogenesis and um, and the formation of urea. And then um, there's a second zone. Here, let me draw it in a different color. There's zone two, and then closest to the central vein is going to be zone three. Now, zone three is going to have things that sort of can work anaerobically, like lipogenesis. And then zone two is is going to be, you know, sort of a mix of the two. Okay, so just so you're aware of 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 the difference that not all parts of the um, of the liver do the same thing, that um, they're sort of divided up functionally depending on how close they are to the uh, portal vein and the hepatic artery and how much access they have to oxygen. Okay, now the, I think the only major cell that I haven't really talked about so far are cells that line the intrahepatic bile ducts. And these cells are called cholangiocytes. And if you look at these cholangiocytes up close, they are ciliated epithelium. And they've got these cilia actually provide motility for the bile as it moves through the uh, intrahepatic ducts. Um, cholangiocytes therefore have a very important role by changing the speed of the uh, motility of bile have a very important role in sort of the regulation of bile, uh, bile flow through the liver and they also have some role in the synthesis of bile salts and they also secrete um, water and electrolytes in, into the bile solution. So again, the main focus of synthesis of bile starts out in the hepatocytes, but the cholangiocytes add their input and have a significant role in the motility through the system. So if you have a problem with cholestasis, um, cholestasis is um, a problem with um, usually with cholangiocytes that is disrupting the motility of bile through the liver. And now I'm going to talk about um, liver function tests in another slide, but the major impact of cholestasis would be increased bilirubin. And it's going to start to impact the rest of the liver because that increased bilirubin in the liver itself is going to cause inflammation. And it's also going to be, it's also going to lead systemically to jaundice or ictrus, whichever term you prefer. And these are all due to, usually to dysfunction of the cholangiocytes and the, their role in motility. Okay, so that brings my discussion of hepatic physiology to a close. I hope, hope you've enjoyed this series of videos. Um, and if you haven't had a chance to see my other hepatic physiology videos, I'm going to put a link up here so you have quick and easy access to those videos. And as always, um, I'd like to request that you just take a moment to provide feedback. If you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. And you also have the opportunity to ask me questions in the comments, and I'd be glad to answer them if I'm able. Thank you very much. I'll see you in future videos.